what's up, what's hey, up, what's up, what's up? Hey, everybody, we're back, we're back. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Ow. Uh, the father and son, son team. team. And guess what? We This is all in the proof, and we are the, the Windy, Windy City, City Tasters. Tasters. Live up in the Windy City. Right. In the great city of Chicago, Illinois. In Studio A. Studio A. Right. Here yeah. we go. You see Seagram's everywhere. You see him at the radius bars and at the highest establishments. Right. You see him at your grocery store. You see these at a at a corner liquor yeah, store, a neighborhood liquor yeah, store. Right. You know, it's and everywhere. No matter where you go, you still see see. They 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 probably outsell some of the other ones, uh, two to one, at least three to one. At, because at, at least the price and it's it's not it's not a bad product. Now, if you missed our lead in about what is gin, this, our whole segment now, these next segments you'll see episodes will be about gin, gin. and different manufacturers of gin. So we got gin everywhere. So today the first product is Seagram's. Yep, and we, we thought we'd start with the with the, with something that everybody knows Woo-hoo. before we get into the more advanced Right, gin. the more expensive ones. And they have a signature bottle. I, you know what people are probably going to say? They don't buy a, a liquor for the bottle. But if right. you go and buy Seagram's anywhere, any size from the half half of a half a half of a paint. Half of a half. Half of a half. Half of a half. Half of a half. I ain't know about that. That's my... Or if you go and get a, a almost so, an airplane bottle, so you're gonna, you gonna go in the store and be like, "Give me a half of a half." Right. They're gonna look at you half of a stupid. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you ever seen it? Have you seen it? Does it say half on a half of a, in the, on the bottle? Yeah. It says something like. Show me that. Yeah. Show me that. Yeah. So but anyway, my son just learned something new right now. But anyway, they got this. She's gonna be half of a. They tennis. got these lines just kind of grew, and and the airplane bottle, even little small bottles before they went plastic. If you found a glass small bottle. It still has this signature design going on right here. So you want to let them know from behind now? We're going to read some information from the back of the bottle to give you a little history on Seagram's. Now, now, we'll say this real quick, and of course, we have a few more. Like, if, if you haven't already seen our first introductory episode, What is Jam? We encourage you to watch that. Right. But here, on, on every bottle, it always says Extra, Extra Dry Jam. Right. And, I, and, and of course, Dry and... Dry in the spirits world means bitter. It doesn't mean that it's gonna make your the tongue stick to right. your mouth or make your forehead crack because you dehydrated or right. something. You know th- th- this uh this is a preference like you know th- like this is a stylish gin. Back then you know gin was gin. Gin was like medicine. Gin was made for certain purposes. So extra dry gin when gin became more popular. Then things begin more fancy and movies right, and right. TV shows, the celebrity drinking it, and they want extra drag because of their martinis, and they want that bitterness, that bitter edge. Right. So this has more bite than, say, some other gins that we'll be getting into later. Right. And so uh, on the back of the bottle, it says since 1939, and think of how you know what, what, the, the World War is happening then, and the things in the in the country, and people sticking their heads up drinking gin. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Seagram has, well, Seagram is a Seagram family, of course. Right. Seagram has artfully blended the world's finest botanicals, and we'll, we talked about botanicals. Flowers, with, berries. Berries, roots. All gin, juniper, juniper berries, and other things. Go with ahead. the pristine, neutral spirit, and neutral means the, cl- the clarity of it. Right. Uh, in a low temperature distillation process, preserving the true essence of the botanical flavors. And then it goes on to say, Gin connoisseurs affectionately describe Seagram's gin as the smooth gin and the bumpy bottle that that, that See, dad described. I, mean, I tell you. And if you, you know, go sometimes, I've heard people say, hey, man, give me some of that bumpy face. they describing the bottle. So if you hear now, that. If you tick them out, it'll turn, it like, <laughs> it'll turn like that. Yeah. So, but, but some people refer to face, a bumpy then. face. Like, they, they talk about the bottle. Just say, hey, man, you want no bump, give me some of that bumpy face over there. You know exactly. If you're looking at some other bottles, you know exactly what you're talking about. So you heard that here. So yeah, uh, it's eighty proof, and uh, now, now, mo- most gins are going to be between eighty and ninety proof. Right, so, the, they have know. to be a minimum of eighty proof. Right, that's the standard they all have. The ingredients can be different. But right here it says one hundred percent neutral spirits, distilled from grain. Like I was telling uh, some somewhere earlier before we there was quick pour. Most of your li- liquors and whiskeys and all that start with neutral spirits. They come out after uh, after the mash process and the distill- distillation. The, 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 you ain't even yeah. drank yet. I know. <laughs> I tell me. This is episode one. Which we get to episode nine. When it comes out, it's all clear. Now, when it comes out clear, white dog, they call it. When it comes out clear, now what do you do with it? Do you go to vodka route? 
do you go the whiskey route, put it in barrels, or do you bottle it? It's all neutral in the beginning. And then, you know, the flavorings. So, but it all comes out clear. So all your gins, until one of these new people come out with something different, are all clear. You have flavored uh, gins too, but we'll discuss that later. Now, we're going to try it neat as we always do. This is weird for us because everybody knows we're in our bourbons and in our various whiskeys, and I'm a scotch man. But we're going to we're gonna keep everything in, in line with the way we do things, and we're going to taste it neat, and then we're going to taste it with a little juice. Right. So, because probably 80% of your gin and vodkas are mixed. So very few people will drink a gin straight, or they add vermouth. Yeah, to make to make a martini. There you go. All right. All right. So let's go with the, the smell. Now, now the, the juniper berries. Of course, juniper berry is a dominant ingredient. Oof, right. The dominant flavor. It has to be there. It's it's just like, you know, bourbon has to have corn. Gin has to have the juniper berry. And you definitely smell a juniper berry, but it's not all in your face. It's, right. It's, it's like a it's like a smooth. Right. It's nose. mellow. It's mellow, and the legs. Legs. Huh? The yeah. legs are kind of heavy for us. Yeah. I, I, I ain't no secrets like had like that. I ain't yeah. no secrets had legs like this. You know what I'm saying? Hey, check out them legs and the secrets. You know what I'm saying? All right, all right. You go to the table. It's very easy to drink. It's very, even though it's eighty, even though it says eighty, eighty, 80 proof, proof, eighty proof. It's a light. To me, it's a lighter gin. And, and and this is why it probably it's such a top seller because it's easy to mix with anything. Right. It's, it blends in with any cocktail. So uh, Dad going to drop a couple of cubes in there. And what I like is I like ruby red. So I'll put a splash of ruby red. And my dad, what, what you going to do on this I one? I might do an orange juice. All right. All right. Give me one more cube, please. Yes. Yeah, put there a cube. Go. There you go. And we're going to just increase the volume. Just a yeah, tad. Increase, increase that. So, uh. And I, I I like a splash of juice in my gin if I'm gonna have juice in my gin, but you're not gonna see a whole lot of people. Kalala lao. You're not gonna see a whole lot of people. Kalala lao. <laughs> Whatever he said. All right. You're not gonna see a whole lot of people. Uh, and that's cool just a little too. bit right there. You're not gonna see a whole lot of people drink straight gin all the time, except if they're like aficionados and that's that's the way they want it. Right. And if you do, they may have like a splash of tonic in there, you know, so they can still taste the gin, but then the tonic kind of evens it out. Yeah, we're not saying you have to mix yeah. your gin, but most you, people, you, we, we just tell you what most you know? people do. Yeah. You may be one of those people, you may be for your, yours, uh, neat. Still very smooth. It yeah. agrees. Uh, yeah. how, does, how does it agree with your OG? Yeah, it brings out, you know, boom, screwdriver, right? Oh. What they call it, vodka and, and yeah, uh, orange and juice. screwdriver. What they call it, monkey wrench or something? They call it something. Well, that could be pliers or something. Yeah, we got <laughs> pliers. Yeah. You know? yeah, I like it. it yeah. Huh. It, it's smooth with the ruby red. So, Seagull's been around for a while. Found the trademark time. secret. They're not going anywhere. Tastes real good, real good. Real good, real good, real good. And I was bottled by, and I was reading it at Fort Smith, Arkansas. It was that's probably the, just a distributor. Yeah, yeah, the distributor. Yeah. So, well, you know what? Let, let, let's let's give it a rating. Yeah, but for everyday, easy to find gin that that's smooth. It, it's it's like you know this is this is something where barbecue, you know, cookout. Right. Every day know, now. This yeah, every, every, day, every, day, every day. Every day. You know, I'm, I'm gonna see. What, I'm gonna see if you shock me with your. You know, every day, every day, not calling themselves special or anything, but every day. But, but, but every day, affordable. That's yeah. a big thing. Affordable. So, here's mine here. Here's mine here. I don't know if you tell. You gave it a five, I gave it an eight. You gave it an eight? I gave, you gave it a five. <laughs> but, 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 but what did you do? Drop diamonds in your glass yes, or something? Yes, I did. You know, and pearls? Di Seagram's, to me, is a very good gin. It's <laughs> affordable. And it, it's a it's good for the price, yeah. So you know what we got a little more. Well, we got a, a lot, lot more. more, a lot more, <laughs> a lot, a lot more. more, a lot so, more. Y'all stay tuned till next time. It's, it's all in the, the proof. proof.